Hello everybody and welcome back to Vintage Survival. So I have left it as long as possible before selling the wool and it's paid off waiting because the price is now even higher than the highest price we can see on the price fluctuations chart. So I think it's 3,615 per 1,000 litres which is ridiculously good. Uh, so we're off to the spinnery to sell this. We didn't quite get two full pallets, but we did get one, as you can see. And we're having to take the soybeans for a bit of a, a, a day out, a bit of a trip out, well, a night out, actually. And, um, yes, the reason for that is just because we have nowhere else to put them, and the price is not very good. So I've just put the pallets of wool on top of them. I love the lighting on this map. Like, the street lights, it looks really good. It's like really warming. <laughs> anyway, here we are. And the beacon of light just kind of destroys a bit, but it's so I sell these in the right location. Don't really know how much to expect exactly, but probably in the region of five and a half thousand pounds. But there's no point guessing. We'll just see. Oh, very good. Six thousand eight hundred and thirty-seven. So that's brought our total up to 12,526, uh, which is money we really do need. And because it is now getting to the end of this day, we're going to move on. I'm going to return the tractor, because this is actually not the exact configuration I want to purchase. We're using the uh, rent to uh, own mod. We're going to go with the higher horsepower one, it's like 150, and we'll probably have a front loader configuration, although that can probably be added later. It's more the actual engine and everything that I want to have now. Okay, and we will be keeping the combine. Eventually we're going to buy that. So I'll just put the trailer back over here. Should be fine there. And this needs to be returned. Wrong menu. Uh, yes, return that so we don't get the daily fee again. As for everything else, yeah, we're just going to keep them leased. So, I will see you in the morning. Good morning, everybody. So, yes, it's all looking very good. The grass has grown a bit. It is already fully fertilized. It does need to be rolled. It's something which I'm still looking into. Basically, saving money. Eventually, we'll start rolling. The field over there is going to have to be redrilled. So I think that'll be today's task with the replacement tractor. And I still can't decide if we should get rid of the John Deere. I think not yet. I think when we purchase the new one, we will possibly get rid of this, unless we have a bit of a sentimental attachment to it, which we will do if we keep it for much longer. Anyway, yes, let's go into here. So we had that one before, which is the 76 series, I think. 7610, and this is the 78, 7810. Uh, we will max it out. So that is the engine conversion, which does bring it up to 152 horsepower. Configuration, I'm happy with original, very happy. Uh, as for everything else, I don't know what it is about VKT, but <laughs> well, I guess it's just in this game actually, because you'd have thought that most manufacturers would make the same tread pattern, but certainly in this game, I do like all the BKT tread patterns flotations oh that would be so good we'll go with that beacon of course we can fully configure this because we're going to be renting it to begin with yes um, I'm going to go with the original extra work lights that's always going to be handy so it's just tucking them up here both, just putting some back ones on too. Is it these side ones on the fenders? It is. Uh, I think I will go with both. Mud guards. Yep. Front guard. Now that depends on what we're putting on the front, I guess. A front loader attacher is something I'd like to have. But these are things that could be added later. Although, actually, no, they can't. Because if we're going to keep it rented, um, then no, it has. it can't be reconfigured only once you've purchased it. So yes, front loader attacher. 
I'm hoping that is going to be... No, we'll go with Quickie. We'll go with Quickie. Uh, air conditioning, no. Front guard. Yes, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So what do we think? I think that looks good. Although I just have a number plate at the back. Not one on the grill here. Very, very nice. £57,900, if only we had the money. So it's 2952 uh, but the daily fee is 579 which is very manageable. That's fine. Hourly fee is 1200 but we're not going to be clocking up the hours much, and all the small jobs will be done with this tractor here. So this is going to be interesting. It's going to be very handy. Uh, obviously, if we want to have a front loader, it's something we'll have to rent separately. Or maybe we could purchase it. But at the moment, we're good. Because that's more for the future. So, we're going to drill. We're going to go and drill the field. That is the field just there. We have got the first application of fertilizer on because we did chop straw. And this will be the second application because I think our drill can do fertilizer. Uh, I might be mistaken. We'll soon find out. Pretty sure it does. Yes, it does. Uh, yes, so it will be highly effective this. It's going to make it fully fertilized. We do have some fertilizer and some seed in there. I would have thought that's more than enough for this field. But the question is, the big question is, what crop? I think that's a cereal crop over there. So that's feed for the chickens. Um... I think I might do oats. Oats will be good. And this is going to be a really fast job. We will have to also get a roller for the arable fields. Because that's going to help the yield. And yeah, I suppose if we were to um, do something like sorghum, or well, anything actually, any crop, then we could try and find a vintage mulcher, maybe a vintage flail because that would give us a bit of an extra bonus. Not much though. Oh, I knew I was going to forget about that. Straight in the ditch. <laughs> uh, well, luckily we sort of bounced through it. But we're not going to bounce back. Yes, I fully sympathise with anybody who's done that in real life because you really can't see when all the weeds and the long grass have grown up. Unless you really knew the land well. You, you wouldn't really know. Anyway, in this game, we can't damage things by doing that. So it's fine. I do kind of wish that you could. And I do wish there was uh, physical damage that you could actually see on the machines. So like if you crashed it, it would actually like, smash the front in. That would be really realistic. But these are all things that you'd want to have an option uh, where you can switch it off because you might not want to have vehicles that can get smashed up so easily if you wanted to play unrealistically anyway. Right, yeah, really fast. I think buying this drill of this size early on was a great idea. In fact, looking back, it's, it's astonishing that the John Deere could even pull it. And that field is on a bit of a hill. But that is going to be it. We get it back to the top and we're finished. Easy. I guess actually we could offer our services with this drill to others. If anybody else has any land to drill, then we could also make some money that way. They probably wouldn't need fertiliser, that would just be a waste, we'd have to see. But that is finished. Nice and easy. So let's just check the contract list anyway. Baling, cultivating, fertilising, harvesting. No. Okay, so there's no drilling. Which is a shame. But now that we have a bigger combine, we could do some harvesting. Uh, I would like to do one which is really local. So let's have a look here. Which fields are ready? Not many, actually.
because it obviously needs to be a combinable crop, not a root crop. I'm sure we can do something, because we've got to keep covering the costs of the Matty Ferguson. Oh yeah, the sheep might also require a bit more water. But what do you think? To the 7810, I'm very pleased that I've gone with this one, because uh, in the end we will purchase it after renting it for some time. Oh yeah, and the extra lights. I haven't tried them out yet. There we go, it's going to be noticeable in the dark. Obviously not very noticeable in the daytime. Ah, oh, that will have uh, fermented by now. Yep, so we can use that if we wanted to, or we could now go with the front loader. We could use the hay fork to move it all, or we could scoop it up, or we could rent the John Deere with the front loader. That would probably seem expensive. And then if I sell that now, I'm going to have to tip the trailer of soybeans, which means we're going to have to somehow scoop them up again. So maybe then we should just get the front loader now. The option is there. It only has to be the Q3. That is plenty big enough. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go without any options. We, we can't really afford them. 7,000. Does that leave enough money for a bucket? Bearing in mind, we can make some money very soon by harvesting. Yes, it does leave enough money. Just. But I don't really see an option here because obviously we can't get it used. And I know about the front loader. There is no, um, yeah, there's no vintage one here. There's not really much we can do about that. Okay. Or, again, we could rent it, we could we could lease it and then buy it in the future. Only 70 pounds a day? I think, yeah. Now that we've got the mod, we might as well. It does make sense. It makes more sense than just leasing continuously because it's actually gonna be ours eventually. So let's go and pick that up. Only 438. Lovely. But yeah, the sheep probably need water. We'll have to deal with uh, them later. And we're going to harvest a field so that we can make some money. Bring some money back in for not only what we've just purchased, but also for the combine itself. Their John Deere tractor was great. It's helped us out. But I think now that we have this, we are probably never going to need it again. But they can use it for other things. We actually, we will use it for things like um, loading up bags, big bags, which we're allowed to do. But actually renting it, yeah, that's going to be highly unlikely. So indeed, we can now tip the soybeans out. And then we can load the silage up. I think the price of silage is good at this time of year. 498. Well, it's not great, not terrible. It's good enough. Because we'll be getting more grass in that pit fairly soon. There's no point letting it get even lower, the price. Uh, right, so this is the biggest problem. Where to tip this? Really, we should have it in the shed. I think I might just make a bit of space. Space has been made, and I've just found we've still got a bit of wheat. Is it wheat or is it barley from another occasion? So we'll just scoop that up. It's barley. And we'll put that straight into their trough. And the soybeans can go in there. Um, actually, yeah, it might be worth tipping this first. Gets it out of the way. There we go. Get it right to the back, but not through the back wall. And then, yeah, this should allow me just to tip it straight into there. It'll trigger where they can eat. There is a trough there. You can just about make it out. Great. And they've got their scratching pole from yesterday. Well, the previous episode. So, put that there, and we'll get scooping. Oh look, we've got our first bit of honey. Nice. We will probably expand the honey production 
in the future. I know that one beehive is not significant enough to really be profitable, but it's a start. And most importantly, it's going to increase the yield of the uh, crops in this field. thousand litre capacity bucket. How many litres do we have? Yeah, it's it was like, what was it, 11,000 before? So I don't know if it's all going to fit, but we'll see. We can keep a thousand litres in the bucket if we have to. So close. I think you will fit. Come on, pick up the fun, but there we go. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, what do we have? It is actually empty. It's just showing. Well, that must be out of bounds, actually. It must be out of the uh, pit. It really doesn't want to pick up that last little bit. It's just pushing it around. And the trailer is full. Well, not to worry. We can get it next time. So, it really is as, well, pretty much as full as it can get. So, yep, before it goes down anymore, we must get over there. It is the very top of the map. Oh, I noticed you can actually attach another trailer to this trailer. Is that water tank included? It looks like it might be, actually, because that's on route. It would be great if we can attach to the water tank. We can! Oh, nice. Come on then, water tank. Now you're going for a little drive. This is something we couldn't have done with the smaller tractor. It's just so good to have that extra power. Better put the beacons on. Bucket first, which isn't quite a thousand litres. 483 pounds. And now for the contents of the trailer. Which we could even tip with the tanker attached. Nice, right. 4,994. So we're back about 14,000 again. Good to see. Now we must stop off at the pond to get a bit more water, and then I reckon we can finish by harvesting somebody's field. There's a field here, this is, uh, this is not a bad one, but it's a bit of a drive I guess, but it's not too far. <laughs> there are closer ones. Maybe the one further down there, what is that, 24? 23? No, actually it's probably 22, which is next to the pond. That'd be a lovely one to do. It also means we can drop the trailer off here. If I can just get that booked in, it is 22. Hopefully, there is a contract for 22. Okay, there isn't a contract for 22. <laughs> uh, right, in that case, maybe we've got one for 24. We do. So we'll do 24. Which means I've already overshot. So the trailer will have to stick with us. That's the tanker full. The flotations are working well. Okay, it's gonna be tight. Will they take? all this water. 
more to the point, will I be able to get the tanker into there? Because I have left that there. Uh, not really out of choice, it's just I had to. Oh, no. They didn't quite take all of it. There's 12% left. Yeah, we'll get that mess tidied up as soon as we can do. We're just waiting for the sheep to eat more. Come on, sheep, keep eating. And now, let's go and harvest that field and make a bit of money. It's probably going to be about 1,200 in total. 900 for the job, maybe 300 for extra grain that we can sell. First things first, let's drop the trailer off, or just park the tractor next to the field. It's not a big field, and for that combine, it's nothing. It's got a good track. We can park on the track. Okay. So, combine harvester. Spin round. Uh, it should go through the gate, hopefully. Does it go through this gate? Look at that, made to measure. Sorry, car. <laughs> Off you go. Right, so we're taking up the entire road. But we're not going far. Oh, I said we won't go far. I've been sat here waiting for all these cars to pass. How are there so many? Oh, oh, I thought it was a clearing. Every time another one passes, another one comes around the bend. Right, maybe after this one? Yes. Good. Never seen so much traffic. I'm only going 300 yards. We made it. That's the first car since the other lot. So straight into the field. Let's get harvesting it, and I suppose I might as well just chop it. Doesn't really make any difference to us at all. I just love the, the chopper, the way it spreads it. Quite satisfying to watch. There is a post in this field which I must be careful not to hit. <laughs> I watched uh, Clarkson's Farm Series 2. Actually, I watched it pretty much as soon as it was released. And yeah, the episode where he crashes into the post, into the, into the pole with his uh, cultivator. Oh dear. That is a nice view. Right, well, I think we get the idea with this. It's quite a high yielding field by the look of it. So hopefully we can fit it into one trailer load. It'll make it easier. But if we don't, we don't. So this is another crop to go to the grain mill, which is the same complex as the other cell point. In fact, it's the same building, but it is the one on the right-hand side. And in fact, I think every contract I've ever done has been to the grain mill, hasn't it? But then when we sell, we usually go to the other place, opposite the grain mill. Right, so that is the harvesting done. I will empty, and I'll take this back to the yard. Then we can finish 
by selling and hopefully my plan uh, is to get about 300 pounds for the grain if we get even more great but yeah that's just me trying to be uh, realistic with the amount that we should get technically we should get nothing but yeah the game is quite generous Looks like it may well all fit. It's good to have a bigger trailer. Just as long as it doesn't leave us with uh, like 10 litres. Lovely. Okay, well, I will see you back at the farm where we can park this up. But that would have certainly helped to pay for the rent for this month. Not much traffic on the way back. Nice and easy. And for now, I will just keep it here. It seems like a, a good place to store it. In the garden. And our cell point is straight ahead. Just keep following this track. Yeah, pretty much. It's so nice that we have a trailer which actually looks like the right size for the tractor and vice versa. This is like the, the perfect tractor for us, it's, it's great. Okay, watch the money. Can we get 300? Oh wow, more than double what I tried to guess at. So that is so good, 643. And on top of that, we do have the contract money, which is 928. I just crashed into their building. Their air conditioner, I'm sorry. So yes, we finished this episode with a fairly impressive 15,723. It's all going very well. And eventually we'll be able to buy more fields and of course buy the machines that we are currently renting. But that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.